What's up everybody, Ruben Garcia here with Fine Fayetteville and I'm here at Dirtbag. And let's just go ahead and tell everyone who you are, what you do, how you do it, and all that good jazz. All right. Hey guys, I'm uh, Tito. I'm the co-owner and brewer here at Dirtbag Ales. Uh, we've been around since uh, 2013 and we've been at this location since May of 2019. I'm sure most of you guys have actually heard about our farmer's market um, and been to some of our events. So. Uh, we're here to stay and we're looking forward to what's in store. Yeah. Okay, cool. And I can't wait to ask that question, like what's coming next? Because I will say you guys do a really good job of constantly expanding, finding new things to dive into. And, and it doesn't seem like y'all are slowing down at all. But before we get to that point, where did all this begin? For the ones who don't know, where did all this begin? So um, originally I started homebrewing back in 2010 um, and while I was working at the emergency room on Fort Bragg, uh, that's where I met my partner, Eric. I was talking to somebody about a dirt bag or basically a 30 pound ale and somebody else overheard us and they said, what's a dirt bag ale? And I was like, that's a great name for a company. So I kind of kept that and like started using it for and that was my my actual garage was the dirtbag ales right. uh tavern and so i was homebrewing and we would do like oktoberfest every year we did like beers for diapers did a whole slew of parties we were drinking a ton of homebrewed beer so you're at home you're brewing when did it come to the top of your mind or maybe somebody told you say listen dude we need to create something bigger out of this than outside of your garage. It was probably the second Oktoberfest that we did. And um, I was about a year out from getting out of the military and somebody was like, have you ever thought about doing this like for a career or for an actual job? And I was like, no, I hadn't, I hadn't really thought that far ahead. Um, and then I looked into it and it was way too expensive. Just the, yeah, the capital for it. I mean, the, Brew systems alone were running about for something our size is about two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That doesn't include install. Shifted focus and looked at uh, contract brewing, which is what how we started out. So basically, I, we would pay another brewery to make my recipes, and uh, then we would buy it back and self distribute it. So uh, myself and Eric were actually driving around uh, the Sand Hills area delivering kegs back in August of twenty thirteen um of the blood orange Kolsch. so wow okay cool so now now i'm just super curious why did you choose that blend over another one um so i'd done like a lot of research um the the actual beer itself was kind of a mashup like a throw together recipe i had blood oranges and i had a Kolsch kit and the two i thought when I was reading about Kolsch style ales, I was like, oh, it's crisp, white, delicious. I was like, blood oranges, why not? Yeah. And threw it together and uh, it was a smash. Um, people were asking me to make it for their weddings. Uh, I, I made multiple batches just for me and the friends to drink. Yeah. Like, so uh, we started off with that and that was the, the best selling beer. Um, and it's still the best selling beer we have to date, actually. So Wow. Yeah, so you, you knew it. And it yeah. worked out really well. Yeah. Did you ever get any kickback on the name? Um, no, not really. I think the name itself actually is one of the reasons why people are so fond of this place because yeah. they it resonates. Um, there's you know there's some throwback to like the military times. You know yeah. there's like Dirtbag Dan or <laughs> um, you know somebody who's not necessarily like they don't have to be a terrible person, but like they're they're going to do their own thing. Right. So. Um, yeah, I think it, it really does speak to people. They see they see the name on T-shirts and on hats, and they they love it. And they yeah, I mean, we never thought anything of it, but as I was walking up here just now, I was like, man, oh, that'd be a good question, just in case yeah. they did run into anything like that. What about that spot off of Hope Mills? No, Legion Road. Mm -hmm. Legion Road. Tell me about some of the things you learned there in that small area before moving out to this area. So Legion Road was really where we we um, I guess earned our keep. Yeah. Um, 
we hadn't intended on opening a tap room in that location just because it was so austere. It was behind, you know, the gas station, the quick loop station. There wasn't really any parking. Um, we only had one restroom. What it showed us is that as soon as we got the, the tap room standing, um, we had this incredible show of the community. Like people came out and they were there in droves. Yeah. Um, it was it was awesome. I mean, we the first event that I like kind of pieced together was like a, a meet and greet slash uh, Valentine's Day mix up, and we had our burger and like Brother Ellis come out and play. And like, yeah. I don't, there wasn't enough room in the place for the amount of people that showed up, and we yeah. didn't even have like the furniture and like all the tables and all that stuff. And I was like, we're gonna need a bigger space. <laughs> so <laughs> that was early of 2016. Yeah. Um, and Jerry had come on, been part of the team since uh, 2015. So the beginning of 2015 to fast forward a year, we hustled, we got the tap room open, we started selling beer uh, to the public, and um, it was it was awesome. Started off with eight taps, I believe, and we ran it up to ten. But just being able to showcase what we actually had to offer versus just the main. Uh, at that point, there was only three beers that were on the market. So, you know, having 10 at the brewery means that you get to try some of the other things yeah. and it gives us a little bit of flexibility, kind of a, you get to play with things, you know, yeah. a little bit more fun. Outside of the uh, Blood Orange, mm -hmm. outside of that one, what was the next best one that people loved at the Legion location? So our first three beers, our first, uh, the core lineup basically was Blood Orange Kolsch, the IPA and then our porter. Yeah. The porter itself started off without having coffee in it. And um, I was playing around in the tap room and I had like this little cold brew coffee extract uh, that I got from, I think it was like Fresh Market or something where you, you dose out like an ounce of it into like eight ounces of water and it's like a cup of coffee. But I was putting that into a pint's worth of the porter and it was super delicious. So um, I kind of formulated uh, the cold brew mocha porter after that. And um, now we get uh, cold brew coffee from a uh, local vendor downtown Vagabond actually. Yeah. So in our larger batches, approximately 40 gallons of cold brew coffee that goes into wow. into that big batch and it kind of it's it's great we released that in the middle dead heat of summer in july and it quickly like that that summer it was actually outselling the ipa giving kolsch a run for its money yeah. so mm -hmm. Ooh, okay so you knew you were on to something when you yeah. uh <laughs> and that was actually like jerry was the one who pushed for for that because like he came in he tried the porter and then he tried it with the coffee and he's like you need to you need to figure out how to do that and i was like <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. It sounds like you really did a good job of surrounding yourself with the right people mm -hmm. who've kind of pushed you to not just you, but the team to come out and just do do different things and do it better and show it better and change things yeah. and all that. Yeah. You should always be improving. Like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you guys have. So now we're out here at a huge place is what I would say is pretty big for, for me. But it's here oh. in Hope Mills. Yeah, yeah. It's here in Hope Mills. And obviously you have the brewery here, but could you just tell everyone what else you have here? Uh, so we got a six acre campus here. Uh, we've got the brewery, so dirtbag ales. We've got uh, dirty whiskey, craft cocktails. We've got napkins. We've got uh, barbecue lab. We have taco repa. We have two covered pavilions, a kids park, dog park, and then a kind of general fielded area. Oh, also uh, Ashes, so uh, Cigar Lounge. Um, it's open on the weekend, so you can, if you're so inclined, you can come out, have bourbon and a cigar, or IPA and a cigar, or quarter and a cigar, get dinner, and just relax. Uh, I, sort of an adult playground, if you will. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I do like how you called it. We just six acre campus. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I will say, you know, one of the big things that we love this place for, and while I'm talking to others, is that you could bring your family out here. Mm -hmm. So it's not just like a brewery that you can come and drink or smoke a cigar. You could bring your dogs, you could bring your kids, you got the playground, you could th throw the soccer ball around a little bit, you could lay out the picnic. I mean, this place, you can come here and just from, if you wanted to, just from when you guys open to dead night, really find something to do the whole time you're here. Yeah, so that was one of the things we picked up from the last spot. We were 
there are folks that would show up every weekend and they'd have their dogs and they'd have their kids in tow. Yeah. And so like, we've always been kid friendly. We've always been dog friendly. We just ask that people be responsible with their pets and with their children, you know, um, cause this is still an adult environment. So, you know, your, your dogs need to be with you. Your kids need to be with you and everybody just needs to behave because it only takes one person to, you know, really tarnish that and, yeah. and kind of ruin the vibe for everyone. Yeah, so, 100%. so and we haven't ran into anything like that, right? No, we've, uh, we've, we've got a lot of rules in place, yeah. you know, it, for what it is that if you're breaking one of those rules, we're, I'm just going to kindly ask you to leave. You're more than welcome to come back and enjoy yourself on a later date. If there's any rebuttal or anything, then it'll go from there. Yeah. <laughs> so what's one of the biggest things you guys have learned here at this location in Hope Mills? There's been a lot. Yeah. There's been a lot. Yeah. Uh, there's really no wrong answer because I'm sure, like you said, there's been thing after thing after thing that you guys have learned. Yeah, I mean... Um, I guess like never underestimate crowds, like having a plan and rehearsing it with your team and knowing exactly having the right people in place. And then also listening to your, to your team, because yeah. all that really feeds into um, the overall feel and, and the vibe again, yeah. you know, like I can't be there to pour every single beer for every single customer that comes here. So I'm dependent on folks that work here for me. And, right. and it's really about them because they, and make the space yeah and you know, they're your your ambassadors to a public that's you know relentless at yeah. times <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah and you'll see the lines just start showing up too man mm -hmm. so they're getting slammed but since we've been here no issues man yeah, yeah no, no, this no, is why we keep coming back even the lines like i gotta give it to them like uh on our busiest days like they're averaging you know their tickets are opening and closing two to three per minute so yeah, yeah. and we can we can tell all that with like the met the metrics that we run but it's a it's a well-oiled machine yeah. and everybody knows their role and they kind of fall into place and it's it's awesome i love it so say it's summertime what drink would you recommend i'm coming in i'm hot i need to just relax what drink would you recommend summertime summertime, summertime. what do we oh we do a great uh sour that's uh it's called dopey sour and we release it in the summer usually mid to late june um and it's honestly it tastes like fruit punch and it's low yeah. abv yeah. um not too bad on the calories easy drinking a little bit of tartness and it's got like guava and peach and then the yeast kind of comes through with that tartness yeah. it's it's wonderful that sounds amazing all right and then with the with all the food variety you have here what should i pick up for food summertime food food let's see here um yeah, yes so i would do uh, napkins would be the chicken wrap or wings. Barbecue lab, I would get their wings or their burnt ends. And then at uh, Taco Arepa, I love just tacos. I'll bust away. Exactly. <laughs> so, all right, it's winter time. Now, now, what drink and food combo should I be leaving with? Okay, or sticking around with? Winter time, I would do the cold brew mocha porter. Um, I would go with Meister Burger from Napkins. Yeah. That's that's pretty good. And then um, I stick with the burn ends at Barbecue Lab. And then uh, at Taco Arepa, I would probably do arepas that that like either chicken or the albasor. Yeah. Yeah. Man, you. you whew. I wish they were open right now. I love it. And then, so I come here, I got the food either summer or winter time, cold or hot. We have some events that happen out here too, and a decent amount of events. If you don't mind, just touch on a few of them just so everyone can get an idea. Okay. So on Sundays, we run our farmer's market and that's uh, basically March all the way through November. So we've got three farmer's markets left at this point uh, for this season. Um, then December, we're actually doing our holiday market. For So for this month in, of November, we've got the Heroes Homecoming release party, which is also a chili cook-off that we're co-hosting with the Hope Mills Chamber. Nothing that large. I mean, we have live music and all yeah. that stuff throughout right. the weekend, uh, weekends, and uh, then December, kicking off December, we've got the Holiday Highlander, which is a um, an event to actually raise money for the continuing the mission, which is they help train uh, service dogs for veterans, and then uh, right after that, we have our uh, holiday market. 
and that's going to be a three-day event so it's friday saturday and sunday we'll tent the field and we're going to have upwards of 80 plus vendors um there's gonna be caroling we'll have a tree lighting ceremony like yeah. all that stuff there's pictures with santa there's pictures with krampus for anything else i think you can pretty yeah. much check uh, check on our social media yeah. because it, yeah. if it's if it's missing me right now like i, I can't i got a lot going on. <laughs> no, there's so much going on matter of fact i just posted one in the fine fayetteville facebook group and it's a whole list and it's one week yeah. it's a whole list so you guys have a lot going on there's always something to do here so if yeah if it's escaping it's totally <laughs> fine go over there and check it out um what's what's your favorite event and then i got a few other questions and we'll wrap it up the, the holiday highlander has been pretty near and dear to my heart i lost a friend a couple years ago and they reached out to us and asked for names for one of the service animals and um they dedicated the dog i think two years ago now so they bring they bring out uh jonesy every year and uh we get to see them and get to see his family and it's it, it means a lot to me yeah. so it really it's uh close to home so yeah come out and uh and uh support that yeah, that's so really first, cool first weekend in december that's so. awesome man all right i got some random questions for you all right yeah. you ready he's like oh uh -oh. it's not that bad i promise all right i just moved to fayetteville what would you tell me about your business uh we are a dog friendly kid friendly brewery and tap room with uh multiple food assets on site wrapped it up i love it <laughs> best compliment you or your business has ever received I guess just the welcoming nature of the place. We have got like harvest hosts that show up and they're from all across the United States and they've been to multiple breweries and wineries and they come here and they're blown away. So like to, you know, for folks that are from so far abroad to come here and say this is the best place they've been is, uh, it feels good. Yeah. Shout out to harvest host. Best perk of being one of the owners of Dirtbag. <laughs> Free beer. <laughs> That was a good one. That was a, that was a softball. Yeah, that was a <laughs> um, outside your business, what would you tell someone who just came to Fayetteville they'd have to do while they were here? Learn about the area. I mean, there's a ton of history here and there's tons of things that are constantly happening. Um, that was one of the things I told my soldiers when, because I was, you know, one of the transient folks that was here and I would go home, like I'd drive back to Florida every weekend or I'd go up to Chapel Hill or to Raleigh. Eventually I was just like, oh, I'm gonna see what's actually happening in the area and realize that literally every single weekend there's something that somebody's doing in the area, whether it's a nonprofit uh, that needs attention or um, is trying to raise funds for their, their uh, cause or uh, some sort of festival, you know, there's a ton happening here. Yeah, and how long ago was that when you said, you know what, I'm not going to go to Chapel Hill. I'm going to stay here and check things out. That would have been 2010, Mark, when I when wow. I got back here. So. so, and how much has it grown, would you say, in those 13 years past? And would that add even more events and more things to do? A lot. Yeah. A lot. Yeah, a lot. Uh, the development, obviously, is crazy. Um, I'm from Jacksonville, Florida, and like we don't have a Macy's in Jacksonville, but there's a Macy's here. So like the fact that there's like giant corporations that are willing to shell out money to like develop the area, like yeah. tells you that there's there's a lot for this area that's coming. Yeah, hundred percent, totally agree. Uh, what profession other than your own would be fun to attempt? Other than my own, yeah. I really liked uh, doing medical stuff, but I don't know if I'd really be all into being medical at the moment <laughs> um yeah, yeah. yeah something science related chemistry's cool now uh um, yeah, totally. yeah. <laughs> um farming would be nice but it's hard work yeah hard work yep and i know that you guys are always you said farming and my mind went here but i know you guys are always expanding is there anything that everyone can look out for that you guys have on the horizon that'll be coming up uh yes yeah, so there's plans for future development um in that cleared lot next to us it's currently our overflow parking yeah um and then we've got hopefully some big news starting first of the year oh, okay sweet so look out for the first of the year is there anything else that you want to tell everyone before we let you go yeah just come out and see us if you're looking for information about any of our events visit us on social media instagram facebook uh websites dirtbagales.com
go out there and check it out. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Dude, thank you. Thank you.